Today we're going to speak about another key to practicing Islam. And that is to understand that there is no power or strength except with Allah. Everybody understand that? We all say this. We say all the time there is no power or strength except with Allah. This is a dua that we, we make every day. But how many of us actually believe it? That's the question. And this is what we're going to speak about today. Because if you truly understand that, you know, that there is no power or strength except with Allah, then it becomes one of the greatest keys. I repeat, one of the greatest keys to practicing Islam. And in order to realize the reality of, of Allah being the sole source of power strength, you have to first understand that in this physical world that we live in, there is no force that can influence independently. Also, there is no force that has influence on its own. Instead, in order to influence others in this physical world, help is needed from another source. Let me give an example. In order for the grass to grow, there must be the, it's contingent on the sun. If there is no sun, then there will be no growing of the grass. There must also be clouds to produce water. There must be rain. Without the sun, without the rain, there will be no crops to grow. So here we can see help is needed from another source. Let me give another example. In order to conceive a child, there must be a sperm and there must be an egg. If there is no sperm and there is no egg, there will be no child. So again, another example how nothing will occur. Nothing in the physical world possesses the ability to independently make anything happen. Except Allah. Allah is the only entity that can make things happen. And he doesn't need help from any other source. Does everybody understand that? And this is why Islam teaches us that we should never expect anyone or anything else to aid us. Nor should we ever fear anyone or anything else harming us except Allah. Because to depend on other people or other things or to fear other people or other things is worthless. Because again, only Allah has the ability to harm or benefit. And unless Allah has decreed for a thing to occur, it never will occur. Does everybody understand that? And again, we always look to the example of the true dream team. The true dream team consisted of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. When Ali received the news during his caliphate that they, the people were planning to assassinate him. He refused to have guards accompanying him. In fact, he told his guards, if Allah has decreed for me to die right now today, then all the guards in the world will not be able to protect me. And if Allah has not decreed for me to die, then all the attackers in the world could never harm me. So Ali refused to walk with a guard. He said, my death will only come when Allah has decreed it to come. It won't come before then. Another example. We have many, many.
many people out there, I'm one of them, who are afraid to catch a cold. So they walk around with masks on. They may even carry Lysol. They may constantly spray lost Lysol, constantly wash their hands whenever a person sneezes and wash their hands when they touch doors. But look, they still get sick. Because that's just how it is. If a law has decreed for you to catch the flu tomorrow, there's nothing you can do today to stop it from happening. It's going to happen no matter how many gloves you wear, how much mask you wear, how much Lysol you spray, how much Clorox do you use. You're still going to get the flu. I had the flu four times already and I am very precautious. Okay. Another example. There's many, many people out there who are afraid to drive in the snow because they're afraid that they may get in a car accident and die. But look how many people drive in the snow, your car skids, your car slides, but you walk away undamaged because it wasn't meant for you to get in an accident, okay? Again, only a law has the power and the strength to harm or benefit. And what mankind fears and what mankind hopes for from other than a law are in reality owned and controlled by him. A law controls that car and keeps that car from hitting into a bank. A law controls the flu and determines whether or not you're going to catch it. A law is in control of life and only he can take it. Do you guys understand that? And once you accept this reality concerning a law, then you become a true believer. And then you reach that status of amiability where you have a pleasant disposition at all times. Alone, by yourself, you're always content. Listen to what a law says about this and the interpretation, the meaning. He says, say, nothing shall ever happen to us except what Allah has ordained for us. He is our Lord. He is our helper and protector. And in Allah, let the believers put their trust. Also, Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning, to whomsoever amongst you who wills to walk the straight path and you will not, Unless a law wills it for you. He is the Lord of all mankind and jinn. What we talked about today. No matter how you may desire to want to walk upon the truth. Unless a law has decreed that for you. It's not going to happen. That's why only a law makes Muslims, guys. You can sit there and and talk about Islam to your family all you want to. But unless a law has decreed for them to embrace this way of life, they'll still die kafirs. Like what the prophet experienced with his uncle Abu Talib. In fact, listen to what the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said in regards to this. He said, When Allah decrees that a person is to die in a certain land, he creates a need for him to go there. SubhanAllah. Only Allah knows where we're going to die. If Allah has written for you to die in Australia, something will happen in your life that will cause you to have to go to Australia and you will meet your death there when Allah has decreed for it to happen. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in another authentic hadith, Allah has appointed an angel in the womb. And the angel says, O oh Allah, a drop of semen. O oh Allah, now it's a clot of blood. O oh Allah, now it has grown to become a piece of flesh. 
And then if a law wishes to complete the child's creation, the angel will, will say, oh, Allah, is it a male or a female? Oh, Allah, will it be blessed in a religion or will it be damned? Oh, Allah, how will he or she earn her living? Oh, Allah, how long will they live? The angel writes all this down while you are still in the womb of your mother. So thus everything about us, how we'll live our lives, how we'll die, whatever sicknesses we will contact, contract in life, all of this is written before we are even born. And there is nothing you can do to change it, guys. There is nothing anyone or anything can do to alter what Allah has written for you. Also, we have another hadith. Whereas once a desert Arab came to the prophet and he said, oh, prophet of Allah, teach me something. Teach me some words that I can say for my betterment. And the prophet told him, say this, say that there is none worthy of worship, but Allah who has no partner. And he is the great, the most great. And praise is to him in abundance and glory is to him. He is the Lord of the worlds. And there is no power and no might except his. Subhanallah. So here we can see the prophet gave the advice that this is the best thing to say. That there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. And there is no power and might other than his. Also in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told one of his companions, he said, shall I not show you a word from under the throne of Allah? And if you say it, it will make you Muslim. And if you say it, you will be one who has surrendered yourself to Allah. And that word is to say that there is no power and there is no strength except by Allah. SubhanAllah. Why? Because again, if you truly believe that there is no power, no strength except by Allah, then again, this makes you one who believes in him. Because such a person who understands this can live Islam because they know that, th that there is no one in life that can harm or benefit him other than Allah. This is a person who lives his life depending solely on Allah. This is a person who is able to handle whatever Allah sends him in life, be it good or bad. He deals with it with patience because he's accepting of Allah's decree. And this is the person who lives his life in contentment because he knows whatever is written for him will not miss him. And whatever is not meant for him will pass him by all because only Allah has the strength so